CAU. If you're trying to grow your business, add diversity. What you do? It'll climb the tracks in university. When it comes to getting clients, you face adversity. You need to hit up climb the tracks in university. Climb the tracks, 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 Profit, freedom, and impact. Go to paydadplaybook.com. If you're trying to grow your business, add diversity. What you do? Hit up client of trace in university. Hey, when it comes to getting clients, you face adversity. You need to hit up client of trace in university. Hey, hey. Paydadplaybook.com. That's P A I D ad playbook.com. So here's what we're going to dive into today, y'all. How to create a budget friendly automated client attraction system to get coaching clients daily. Okay. Coaching clients daily. So if you're a consultant, same thing applies. If you're a service provider, same thing applies. If you're a speaker, same thing applies. I just use coaching um, loosely right now, right? Warning. Tools are a slave to the strategy. The strategy isn't a slave to the tool. So I'm going to say this again. Tools are a slave to the strategy. The strategy isn't a slave to the tool. Let me explain. A lot of people in this internet world, they obsess over tools. What tool should I use? You can ask me any question you have about million, building a million dollar coaching or consulting business. The first question somebody asked me, y'all know what they asked me? Which autoresponder should I use? Which funnel should, what funnel should, should I use this funnel software or this funnel software? It like, it doesn't matter. Y'all say you want to get in great shape and you had a trainer and they were showing you how to get into great shape. And the first question you asked him was like, what kind of dumbbell should I use? Like what name brand? It doesn't matter, right? It, 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 it doesn't matter. If you want to hang a picture on the wall and let's say you had a, let's say you required a hammer to put up some nails. Does it really matter the brand of the hammer? No. You like, you can go to Family Dollar and get a hammer. Like it doesn't matter. So I'm like, what's Family Dollar? Well, whatever your local cheap story is. Like here in Atlanta, we got we got Family Dollar, we got Dollar General, we got uh, the Dollar Store, like we got all kind of stuff, right? But anyway, it doesn't matter. So the tool doesn't matter. Whatever tool you have is good enough. Does that make sense? Like you don't got to go change tools, okay? So don't let these marketers sell you on why this tool is superior, right? It doesn't matter, okay? Here's what I would advise: if you hire a coach. Or join a program and they're teaching you a specific methodology and how they teach you the methodology and they, they teach you via a specific software or a specific tool, then I, then I would recommend using that one. Right. That's just me. Now, if you're very if you're technologically savvy and you're like, well, I know how to make this strategy work with this tool that I love, then fantastic. But if you aren't then don't just be like, well, I don't want to go buy another tool because it's $97 a month. Because if you say, I don't want to buy another tool because that's actually $97 a month, that assumes that you don't plan on what they're teaching you to actually work, right? Because the tools pretty much take care of themselves. So that's like, for example, we, when, when I'm speaking to a, a potential client and they say, hey, I want to work with you because I know you can help me get the $50,000 a month or a million, dollars, a million dollars or whatever. And I'm like, all right, great. And they, when we tell them the investment, and then they're like, um, well, I don't know if, you know, I can do that. I can't afford that. Well, it's typically, you're typically, not in, you're typically not investing in coaching or something because you can afford it. You're typically investing because you want to get to another place in your business, right? So, and also you, when, you, when people say stuff like that, they're assuming that our work together isn't going to work. So typically it's like, okay, I'll say, okay, this probably isn't the best idea for us to work together because you are already kind of assuming that our work together isn't going to work if you believe that it's not even going to take care of this minimal investment for us to actually work together for you to get the insights to get you to where you're looking to go. Does that make sense? So you're kind of thinking from a place of disadvantage versus a place of advantage. Does that make sense? And that may be a conversation y'all can, some of you all can have with individuals who are having conversations about working with you as well. Does this make sense, y'all? Because it, it, it shouldn't be comfortable, right? When it comes to making an investment, the investment to work with you, it shouldn't be comfortable for them. 
So a lot of times people say, well, I want to figure out what people can afford. What people can afford has zero to do with you, right? You want it to be outside of what they see as their affordability. Why? Because you do them a disservice if you make it comfortable for them. Because if you make it comfortable for them, it's not going to be enough for them to actually show up and implement to get the results. Does that make sense? So for example, so Planet Fitness charges like $9.99 a month. Their black package, I think is 20 bucks a month, right? They're the number one gym franchise in the world, right? And they purposely sell more memberships than their gym can hold. Purposely, that's their business model because they already know the numbers of how many people are actually going to show up and on what days. They literally track it, right? Because they don't charge enough. They know they don't charge enough for it to sting. Now, now, if you got a gym membership that you pay $10 a month, it's easy for you not to go. But imagine if you hired a, a coach or a trainer and the trainer is charging you $1,000 a month. How many of y'all going to show up for those gym sessions then? How many of y'all going to show up? Like, just, let's just keep it real. If that, if that trainer charge you $1,000 a month, $2,000 a month, how many of y'all going to show up? 100%. I got a client I was working with. He was charging $249 a month for unlimited coaching, unlimited training, right? People weren't showing up. He charged $8,000 now for 90 days. How many of y'all know people are showing up? How many of y'all know people are like submitting their, their before and after pictures? How many of y'all know they're following the meal plan? Because now when they finna eat that pizza, they be like, man, I just paid 8000 Because so it's going to sting a little bit. Now, step number one. Step number one to create your automatic client attraction system. This first step is more important than a funnel, right? Because I, again, I talk to a lot of people and they say, well, I know what a funnel is. I've heard of a funnel. Before we even get into designing the client attraction system, I think this thing is more important because a lot of people ask me, Markwell, should I do a webinar? Markwell, should I do a VSL like phone call funnel? Markwell, should I do a book funnel? Markwell, should I do a challenge funnel? Markwell, should I do a virtual event funnel? Like, here's the thing, y'all. It matters, but it matters far less than what I'm about to share with you, right? What matters most, number one, is your offer. Like, what is your offer? So before I get into how to design this automatic client attraction system, the first thing we got to talk about is like your offer, okay? The first thing, you got to clear, how do you dial in your offer? Like, this is the one thing you can do right now today to immediately increase your business revenue without buying anything. Like, you don't got to go buy a new software. You don't got to, none of that. You can go do, you can literally do this right now, okay? So what do I mean? So most people think that their offer is like their product or their service that they're selling. Your offer isn't the product. It isn't the service that you... That you. So most people, I ask them, I say, okay, well, what's your offer? And they'll say, well, we do weekly group coaching calls. I do a one-on-one call. Um, They get my downloads. They get this, this, and the third. That's not the offer. Those are the deliverables. That's like your... That's the deliverables, right? Your offer is the transformation you provide, right? So let me give you all an example. I'm going to give you all one of my favorite examples, right? Some of y'all probably heard me talk about this a lot. But how many of y'all are, are, do y'all remember, how many of y'all are familiar with Domino's Pizza, right? So a lot of companies create, sell pizza, right? Domino's offer was, when they first blew up, their offer was fresh, hot pizza in 30 minutes or less, or is what? Free. You, we're gonna, we promise to get you fresh, hot pizza in 30 minutes or less, or it's free. They didn't say it's going to be the best pizza. They didn't say it was going to be non-GMO. They didn't say it was going to be vegan, right? They didn't say it was the best ingredient straight from Italy. None of that. They didn't say it was made from scratch. All they said was, we're going to get you fresh hot pizza in 30 minutes or less or three. And their market, they, they started by a college campus, right? And the target market was kids at, high, at college and who smoke weed and they have the munchies and they want pizza. Right. So fresh hot peas in 30 minutes or less. That's their offer. Does this make sense, y'all? So when somebody works with you, what is your offer? DiGiorno. How many of y'all ever heard of DiGiorno? Right. So what was their offer? DiGiorno, if y'all remember, DiGiorno said it's not delivery. It's DiGiorno. So essentially, they were like, this ain't delivery, but you can get the quality of delivery 
just in your freezer. So when you come home and you're like, I want to get pizza and you don't want to wait 30 minutes, you can just pop this in the oven in five, 10 minutes. You got pizza. Is, is this making sense, y'all? Are y'all following me? So if you think about Starbucks, how many, like, how many coffee drinkers I got on here? Like coffee drinkers. Cool. How many Starbucks drinkers we got on here? Somebody said, uh. So look, so you can go, so think about it. You can go to the gas station and get a cup of coffee five months. Hot. Like a dollar. Right? If you go to Starbucks, you're going to spend about five. Why? Because their offer is different. Right? You come in, there's some prestige around drinking co- co- um, Starbucks. Right? They give you the little swirl at the top with a little design on it. Might write you a little note. You can hang out with the other people in there. Right? That's like their offer. So it's not, you're not, for with Starbucks, you're not just buying a coffee. Right? Does it make sense? So I'm going to give you one more example. If you think about Disney World, what's Disney's offer? Disney's offer is the happiest place on earth. Disney doesn't sell an amusement park. Are y'all following me? They don't sell an amusement park. Disney and Six Flags ain't the same thing. Right? It's just not. Disney is the happiest place on earth. There can only be one of those. Right? So that's why I call so much to go. Like you go in there, you about a pen, just like this. I probably got a box of these for maybe five dollars. You go to Disney, you'll get one of these pens for twenty five dollars, and it only has the Disney logo on it, and people buy it because it's the happiest place on earth. Are y'all following me? What? So what are you saying, Marco? What I am saying, ladies and gentlemen, is what is your offer? Right? What is your offer? A lot of people think that business coaching is their offer. Marketing coaching is their offer. Fitness training is their offer. No, that's not your offer. What's the transformation that you provide? I'm going to give you a simple way to put the, the, to frame this. I help blank do blank. That's a simple way to start like minimizing it and breaking it down. And listen, y'all, it doesn't matter how much money you spend on ads. It doesn't matter how many funnels you build. It doesn't matter how many followers you got on Instagram. Right. It doesn't matter how big your social. It doesn't, it doesn't, none of that stuff matters. If the offer isn't right. It's all about the offer. So it's his quote from a great direct response expert. Somebody was coming to him to pay him for consulting services. Right. And it was like, man, I changed everything, man. He was like, it was like, I'm spending more on ads. You know, I wrote a new sales letter. I've done this. I've done this. I've done this. He was like, nothing is working. Yeah, I know what he said. How many y'all, how many direct response nerds uh, know what he said? He said, it's the offer, stupid. He's like, it don't matter how much stuff you go do. It doesn't matter how pretty you make your page. It doesn't matter if you go get new brand headshots. It doesn't matter if you build a new website. None of that matters. No, not the layout of your offer. It's the actual offer. Your offer is the transformation that you provide. It's the Godfather offer. How many of y'all watched Godfather before? Any Godfather fans on here other than me? My man said, he's going to make them what? An offer they can't refuse. When you, when you make somebody an offer they can't refuse, the price doesn't matter. So let, let me give you an example. So, one of the, so for us, one of our offers, or one way we frame our offer, We can turn your annual income into your monthly income, right? So if somebody's making $250,000 a year, so that's about $20,000 a month. If we say, hey, look, we can show you how to take that $250,000 a year and make $250,000 a month. However, it's $100,000 for us to show you how to do it. Like, is that a no-brainer offer? Like for one hundred thousand dollars, we're going to show you how to take what you used to make last year. It's two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. We're going to show you how to make debt two hundred fifty thousand dollars every month. We're going to show you how to do it step by step by step, and even and help you do it. It's a no brainer offer. So let's say for some example. So I got a client who I think we helped them get to. I think they like I think they had like forty thousand a month. I think right now. I think if I'm not mistaken, they basically show people how to lose thirty pounds in ninety days, guaranteed, without going to the gym. Or without, you know, stopping eating all the other stuff they love to eat. Never have to step foot into the gym. He was like, I literally can tie you to a table for 90 days. 
and you can lose 30 pounds and you just do these specific things. Does this make sense? Most personal trainers, all they do is help people lose weight. That's not an offer. That's a me too offer. All personal trainers show people how to lose weight. That ain't no different, right? A lot of people argue that they're better. I w- so we just had our, what we call the wealthy black um, CEO yesterday's shirt. We just had our wealthy black CEO camp this past week. No, I think it was last week. And one of our clients, he's a, he's a, and they offer accounting and fractional CFO services, right? And his argument is that he's better the other individuals who provide the same service. And I was like, well, better is subjective. Anybody can argue better. Well, we're better because we do taxes this way. No, nobody cares about that. How are you different? So after digging into his stuff, he's helped his clients save $11,150,000 in taxes over the last year. That's how you're different, right? Because now we can actually quantify that. People can argue better, but they can't argue different, especially when you can differentiate, especially when you can use data to differentiate. So, so how are you? I'm saying all this because I hopefully y'all are getting this, you writing this down and you workshopping this right now. How are you different? So some people ask us, well, Marquette, how are y'all different? Well, go to, and I, and I just say, hey, go to the wall of proof. Go to the wall of proof.com. That'll show you how we different. We have more success stories in the coaching and consulting in course creation space than anybody else hands down. Nobody's even close. Pound for pound, more success stories. Like, you can't argue that. It's like, okay, here's, it's boom, 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 boom. If you can find anybody else that's even close to as many success stories as us, we'll pay for you to join their thing. Right? It's, 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 no, it's nowhere close. Does, does, does this make sense? So that's number one. Number two is you got to have the offer triad. Right? I'm going to walk you out through this in a second. So what's the offer triad? So first of all, what is a triad? A triad is a group, or, a group or set of three connected people or things. So it's a three-part process. So when you're looking at your client attraction system, which I'm going to break down in a second, is you, you got to have three offers, okay? A big mistake I see people making is in their ad, they're selling their coaching program. Huge mistake, right? Now, if you want to retarget an ad, with people who are already familiar with what you, what you do and you just push them to book a call, then that's a little bit different. But if you're running an ad to straight cold people who don't know who you are, selling your coaching program or attempting to sell your coaching program in an ad is a huge mistake. Okay? So, and I'm going I'm to show you how to do it in a second. So that's number two. You got to have an offer triad. Number three is really understanding the client conversion cycle, Right? So the first layer, and I'm going to break. So the first layer is awareness. The second layer is interest. People become interested, which is you. Then, then they engage and then they become a client, right? So right here, in stage one and stage two, they're what we call an MQL, right? So an MQL is a marketing qualified lead. So right here, these people aren't even ready to have a sales conversation yet. So when somebody sees your ad and we're automatically trying to sell them into your coaching program straight from the ad, huge mistake because they're just a marketing qualified lead. Only 2% of the market is ready to do business right now. And when you think about it, if you look at all the leads you generate, 50% of the leads, right? 50% of the leads are never going to buy anything, right? 15% of the leads, they're going to be ready to buy 30 days, 60 days, 90 days from now. Are they ready to buy now, anywhere from now up until about 90 days from now? The other 35% of those leads, they're going to be ready to buy 90 days, a year from now, two years from now, three years from now. Does it make sense? But 50% of leads ain't never going to buy anything. So like, for example, when I do these weekly, when I do these weekly trainings, these weekly trainings aren't to get clients, right? I'm very clear. That the majority of the people who show up on these weekly trainings are never going to buy anything. They're just going to show up for the free stuff. And I'm okay with that. Right? I'm okay with that. I just want you to be okay with it as well. Because most of your leads that opt in and show up on your training is they're never going to buy anything. Right? They're going to show up. They're going to listen to your trainings for 52 weeks and take a nugget here and there. And it'll take them 52 weeks to finally put something together that they can start to implement because they're getting it piece by piece an hour at a time for 52 weeks. When they could have just actually just paid you, right? And then within 30 days, if that, they could have got everything that they required that it took them 52 weeks to get. Does that make sense? 
So I'm, I'm sharing this with y'all because I want you to have this perspective of when you got these leads coming in and when you got these individuals engaged in, because sometimes people get frustrated, but that's just what it is. Some people are there. Some people, think about it, y'all. Some people, how many of y'all know people, when they, they go to barbecues, they go to parties, stuff like that, they never bring nothing. They go to birthday parties, they, they never bring anything. They're going to eat. Not only are they going to eat, but they're going to take what? What, they, what else are they going to take, y'all? They're going to take to go, right? They're going to eat and take some. They're not going to bring anything. That's just who they are. Now, are they bad people? No. It's just what it is, right? 20% of the people are going to, like, contribute to the food, like, like put it together, right? So 20% of the people are going to provide 80% of the stuff to pull the party or the barbecue off, right? And then 20% of the people are going to eat 80% of the food. And those 20% who ate 80% of the food didn't contribute nothing. This is how it works. It's, it's the same thing, y'all. It's, it's human psychology. It's, it's the same thing. All right, let's keep going. So we got a marketing qualified lead, and then we have a sales qualified lead. A sales qualified lead, they're at the bottom. They've engaged with you. They're ready to become a client. They're in that, they're in that, that, that lower 2%. They're ready to have a conversation, right? They're ready to have a conversation. Now, my favorite part of this process, I'm going to give you two different examples. There's, there's all different types. Let me say this as well. The internet has made people believe that funnels are pages. So some people are like, well, this funnel or XYZ funnel or give me this tool to get this particular. A f- funnels aren't pages. Funnels are a process, right? So you're taking people through your funnel. What do you mean, Marquette? All right. I mean, let me give you a recent example. Then I give you all an old example. So how many of y'all know about McDonald's, right? Everybody, like, you know about McDonald's, right? How many of y'all eat McDonald's, right? I'm not judging you. You can be honest. It's okay, right? It's okay. Okay, some of you eat McDonald's. Perfect. Some of you don't eat McDonald's, right? But guess what? We're all in McDonald's funnel, though. Does this make sense? How are we, how, how are we all in McDonald's funnel? I'm going to show you. Because we are aware. We may not be interested. We may haven't engaged. We may used to eat it. We probably don't eat no more. But we're in the funnel because we're aware of it. Did we go to a page to opt in? Did we click? Did we go to a page? No. Right? We were just made aware. Maybe through an ad on TV. Maybe as children, we're indoctrinated automatically into McDonald's. All that good stuff, right? So before the internet, how marketing used to work is you used to receive a sales letter in the mail. You read the sales letter, and if you want it to sting, you have to cut out at the bottom of it. You have to write your information in, and you have to send this thing back with a check, right? So you had to go to the mail, send it back, then they get it, and then they send you the thing back. Does that make sense? That's how marketing was done. Now we can click on an ad, go to a page, click on the order form, check out, immediately get access to it. But before that, that's how the process was done. Now, when somebody sent you this letter in the mail, did you have to go to a website? Did you have to go opt in to get in the funnel? No. When you opened your mailbox and you pulled that letter out and opened the letter, guess what? You are now in the funnel. So a couple of things. So a popular funnel these days is what they call the ascension funnel, right? So it's kind of how it works. It's the stairs. So you give away some for free, then you sell some for $7, then you sell some for $4.97, right? Then you sell some for $9.97, then you sell some for $5,000 or more, right? Up here. And they tell you, you know, you got to charge low prices and blah, blah. You know, that's your thing, cool. However, that's one way to do it. That's not my favorite way to do it. A couple of reasons. Number one is it's too complicated. I like simple. I dropped out of school in 10th grade, got a ninth grade education. I like it simple. I also don't like people to penny pinch me, right? If I got a problem that I want to solve, I want you to sell me your best thing, right? I don't want you to be like, well, you should probably start with this first. And then once you go through that, then you can buy this thing. And then you buy this thing. And then eventually you can get our best thing. I don't like that. That's just me. Right. I just like, I got a problem I want to solve. How much is your best thing? Right. I've been on webinars before and I'm like, look, man, I'll hit them up. Like, look, I see your webinar. I saw your ad. I think what you're going to teach is dope. Like, what's the thing you're going to sell? 
what's the biggest thing I can buy? Let me just get that because I got a specific problem. I want, I want to close the gap of how fast I can get the result that I'm after. Okay. So that's one way. It's, it's, it's too complicated, right? If you if we're in a hotel right now and we want to get to the 10th floor, right? Some folks use the low ticket offers on the essential to generate ad dollars. Yeah, and that's cool, right? Again, some people say sell a low ticket offer to offset your ad expense. Like um, I think like um, uh, like uh, who was that? Like J Mac just said. I, I agree. I don't like to do that because I believe that you should only sell people stuff that's in their best interest, right? If you're selling somebody something simply to offset your ad expense, that's not in their best interest. Like, what's the likelihood that I'm going to really read your ebook? Like, if somebody needs to lose weight, they're borderline diabetic, right? They need to get off these medicines and you sell them an ebook for $7. What? They already got a lot of ebooks. They already got a lot of books. Like, what's the likelihood of them reading that book? No, they need a, a solution now, right? Are, are y'all following me? Like, they need a solution now. Like, if you're a holistic coach and you show people how to reverse cancer and diabetes and stuff like that, why would you sell them an ebook? Like, sell them your program so you can actually help them get on the fast track to reversing this thing so they can live longer. Like, sell them that thing. This, again, this is my philosophy. Y'all do it how you want to do it. It's your business. I'm just telling you this is how I operate. I want, I want to help people get results as fast as possible. I don't want to penny pinch them. That used to irritate me. I'm like, what is the real thing? Like, I want to, I used to hate buying a course, and at the end of it, it's like, hey, for you to get that, now you got to buy this. And then you get into that, and they be like, well, you don't got to get nothing else. And you buy something, they be like, oh, well, wait, there's more. You know, buy this thing, and that's going to help you implement the thing you just bought. I'm like, well, I just thought the thing that I just bought was the best thing. And I'd be like, well, no, you got to get this and then you'll be fine. Then I buy that. And then before you know it, I got to buy another thing. It's like, no, just sell me the thing to get me the result that I want. Again, this is just me, y'all. Right? So I didn't like it. I want to, I want to, me, I want to get results as fast as possible. Number two, I want to help other individuals get results as fast as possible. Some people will say, well, you got to sell somebody something low ticket first before they'll buy something high ticket. That's not true. And we know that's not true because we don't buy like that. Every, most people on here has bought a car before. If you like that model, great. I'm just sharing with you that's one way to do it, okay? I know people who make millions with that model. I just don't like it. That's one reason I don't really sell courses because it's a 3% completion rate on a course. Industry-wide, if somebody buys a course, it's a 3% chance they're going to go through it. How many, be honest, how many of y'all have bought courses you haven't even logged into yet? Or is it just me? Like you got courses, you haven't even logged in, right? And then how many of you have gone through courses and you got to a point where you got questions, but you don't have anybody to ask. And now you just stop and then you got to go buy something else. That's why I believe coaching and consulting is so powerful because now you actually got somebody who can be there for you to make sure you don't get stuck and you can actually get to where you're looking to go. Will it cost you more? Yes. But can you get where you're going faster 100%? Okay, so that's one way. So those are the stairs. Now, I believe, so if we're in a hotel, we want to get to the 10th floor, we can go up the stairs, right? I don't want to go up the stairs, though, unless we like trying to get our steps into something. Other than that, I want to get to where I want to go as fast as possible. So that's why we designed what we call the elevator funnel. So the elevator funnel, somebody come from an ad, they go to your landing page, right? They go to what we call a money content video. Because on this landing page, you're saying, hey, in this free video, I'm going to show you how to create an automated client attraction system where you can get one or two coaching clients every single day. And then in this video, I'm going to teach them how to do that. I'm not going to act like I teach them. I know a lot of people say, well, make it real complicated and act like you're teaching them something. So they actually need you to help them. I don't agree with that. No, we're not. I'm not saying act like you're teaching them. Actually teach them. So regardless if they take the next step or not, they can actually go take something and go implement it and get results. The best way to prove to show people that you can help them is what? By actually helping them. It's real simple. So in that video, we're going to teach them. And then we're going to say, hey, if you enjoyed this and you want me to actually help you implement this, click on the button below and schedule a call. They're going to click on that button. They're going to go to an application to apply. They're going to go to a confirmation page to get them ready for the call. 
and then they're going to have the enrollment call. You're going to have some follow-up emails and stuff like that to ensure they show up for the call. Now, the offer triad I talked about, in your ad, you want to have a specific offer. And your offer is simply for them to get access to your free thing. And then from there, in your money content video, once you give them what you promised them, your next offer is going to be to book a call with you. And then from there, it's going to be to buy your program. So it's three offers you want to create. Does it make sense, y'all? It's three offers that you want to have. And each process sells the other part of the process. So you're going from your ad to your money content video, and you're giving them value at each step. So I give you an example. So one of our ads, we have, you can get the paid ad playbook. So we say, okay, look, if, you want, if you're struggling to get new leads and clients for your business every single day, we're going to give you the paid ad playbook for 100% free. Shows you how to get 50 to 100 leads every single day on autopilot. So that'll be the offering ad. Then they get access to that. I give them a bonus video and I'm walking you through it. And I'm saying, hey, here's everything. But if you want me to actually help you do this, click on the button below and schedule a call and let's chat to see if we're a good fit. We don't work with everybody. We're super picky because we only work with people who we know we can actually help. Right. But either way, you walk away from the call with a, with a specific by step game plan to go implement. Either way, regardless if you decide to work with us or not. A lot of people think because their stuff is free, they don't got to sell it. A lot of coaches and consultants, how many of y'all see this? They say all of their marketing is go book a call. If you go to the main website, it says book a call. If you click the link in the bio, it says book a call. People aren't going to book a call. You're going to have two things are going to happen. Number one, people aren't going to book a call because they don't know enough about you yet and how you can help them. Right. Number two. If people do book a call and they haven't been properly framed, you're going to get on the phone with a whole bunch of unqualified people. And now you're going to be on the phone doing a presentation, explaining to people what you do. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? How many of y'all have experienced that? You know what I'm talking about, right? That's what you don't want, okay? So you want to have those three offers in place. Thank you so much for checking out this episode. Have a phenomenal day because you absolutely deserve it. Talk to you soon. What's the difference between you and mega successful coaches and consultants with a dream business? Simple. They're getting more leads than you are. What if there was a way to get 50 to 100 leads every single day like clockwork? Would you want it? Then go to www.getdailyclients.com to access our paid ad playbook that has brought in millions of leads for our clients over the years on complete autopilot. This is the podcastfactory.com.